commonly referred to as the breadbasket of Grenada, because of the proliferation of agricultural produce, the parish of St. Andrew is a basket of sorts for Grenadian culture. Within that basket, one would find cultural expressions that run the full gamut. From Calypso Castle to former Calypso monarchs such as African Teller, Timpo and Darius, to dance groups such as the Birch Grove Lancers and mass bands such as the Rainbow City Mass Players and including music bands, the Rhythm Riders, Rhythm Mix and Moss International. Now, the dynamism of culture in the nation's largest parish led to the extremely successful Rainbow City Festival, a festival that in some years rivaled the national carnival celebrations in its prominence, organization, and delivery. From the tone man I gather, that is behave bad, and party hawking about the place. It's session after session, get ready to go, swing in full pace. It was the confluence of these cultural expressions that served as the inspiration for a new musical song. A song that originated from within the walls of a recording studio located in Grand Bras St. Andrew. A song that was referred to as Labby Music. The drums and conch shell, the abstract spelling and social and political topics of the Jab Jab bands of St. Andrew held something beyond just a traditional form of expression. Was it possible that the Labe song could come from the fantastic chaos that was Juve? The year 2016 marks the 25th anniversary of Jambalasi rule by Moss International. Let us now meet some of the members of the band. Okay, I'm Leon. I was the bass player in Moss and also was the manager of the band in terms of bookings and uh, that kind of thing and also managed the on-stage programming and performance of the band. Okay, I'm Ricky. Um, started off as percussionist, took a, br a brief stint as guitar player and then landed on the drums and remained the drummer for the band almost the entire period thereafter. Right, my name is Garnet William. Due to my relationship with um, Don and Leon from the Catholic Youth Movement. Um, and then following up, being lining around the studio for a number of years as a young guy, then I got myself involved in the band itself as a song engineer. My name is Agnes Forrester, and I was the lead female vocalist in Moss International. The vocal identity of Moss International was undoubtedly the man affectionately known as the singing MC. Music was in my thing, eh? From since I was little. In fact, my father used to be a musician. Yeah. He he wasn't in, he used to be in a band which name I don't know. Okay. He used to be a drummer. And he claimed to be the first person to go in the market and beat little they used to have this SOP oil pan. Okay. My father name was Leonard, yeah? So he used to beat a, a little steel band thing like, you know. I should say that I won road match in Grenville when I was about 11 years old, 11 or 12 years old. Um, singer had this thing, I think it's singer. There's a fella called Mikey, somebody from Ladi. He was in the Lions Club and they had this Chidi's Carnival. 
And I remember I sang this song, Steam Dong, Breadfoot and Maniku. People do remember Alfonso making Ligaro. You know? <laughs> and I got $10 for my prize. You know? <laughs> that was my, my, my prize for winning the, winning the, um, the junior Monarch for this kind of a thing. And probably for getting match because Steve and everybody played that. Steam Dong, Breadfoot and Maniku. So I guess from, from young, that was something that was, you know, with me. Moss International was born out of a unique set of circumstances, musical relationships, and the popular band movement taking place in St. Andrew during the early 1970s. Moss started in 1974, and it was the outgrowth of a couple of other bands which Don was involved in. Um, originally, he started playing with Rhythm Riders back in 72, 73. And then he was part of Generation Revival into late 73, early 74. Generation Revival ended around the time when we had the strike in 1974. And Don and a couple of his other friends then got together in a group, an informal group called SOBs. And they used to play, be playing in stage concerts and so on. And SOBs around the middle of 1974 grew into most at that time it was just Moss, Masters of Sweet Songs. Over, over the years, the name grew to be Moss Interna in International. Um, when the band started, uh, there was, John was the leader of the band, obviously, and keyboard player. Um, I came in as the guitar player, and then some of the other SOB members were playing bass, um, drums, and so on. And as Ricky said, he was playing the congas. Um, after about six months, we had a major shake-up in the membership of the band because a new band called Black Experience, was it Ricky? No, I don't remember the name. Uh, which Black Experience was from Tongue. Was from so Tongue. Be, which uh, Keith went to. Yeah. Anyway, we had a major shake-up and we lost the jump, we lost the bass player and then we, a couple months after, lost the drummer. So when we lost the bass player, we could not find a suitable replacement for the bass. So I was also trained on the bass, so I was switched from guitar to bass and we brought in a guitar player. And then a couple of months, and Ricky deputized as guitar player for a couple of months and then we got a full-time guitar player. And then the drummer left and Ricky changed to, to drums around the middle of 1975. Mm -hmm. I think the first performance was May 1st in Dunfermline. Yeah. <laughs> you can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we also, in 1985, brought in singing MC. Um, he was the MC in the tent, but he also liked to sing. And we actually started doing a song, I Like the Walkers MC, as part of his, his comedian act, as, a, as, a, as, as, as the MC. But the song actually brought him to the finals. <laughs> so, in 86, I had the song Labi Carnival Hot. That time, um, the, the, the thing was kind of coming on stream. They had this um, Rainbow City exhibition, what have you. <laughs> So um, I made this song just for the performance to boost, boost the, the, um, the show, you know? And strangely, it took off. If you listen to Labia Carnival, it's fun. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Ooh, 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 because we're we happy. That, you know, because we have vibes, the studio. No, this studio, more studio was not in everything, you know? <laughs> you might find the thing there now, but it was a place where we meet with our family. It wasn't just... You, a group of musicians come. It was like a family. Jambalasi rule was not an accident. As the story unfolds, we will hear how Moss International deliberately converted Juve Morning Commerce into commercial music success. What we normally do in the studio, like when we meet on evenings to practice, we always have this, we say, melee chat first among band members, you know, talking about these activities, what we're hearing, what's going on, and so on. And um, at that point in time, myself and Singing MC was employed with the same organization. So we were looking at all organizations um, in terms of um, like productivity among workers and so on. They, 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 you know, the whole idea came up about you know, workers working hard and some people being compensated and some people not compensated. So from that discussion we started um, saying, you know, well you work your work, same damn thing because 
you know, you contribute and you're not contributing. So we, we, we came up with the idea of, you know, well, let's do a song. So I asked an MC, what song you talking about? I, I'm not a vocalist. So Don sit down and back there and he, Don always had great ideas. Don start up and he start framing in his mind some, some sort of song. And then he say, what y'all think about coming up with a jab jab song? Hey, it wasn't the full band, it was a few of us and we say, Don what's wrong with you, you mad? Moss doing jab jab song, that doesn't sound as Moss. And the idea just start flowing. And Leon came up with the thing, well look man, they have a lot of things going on politically. So why we don't try to incorporate what's going on politically into the song and try something. You are saying jab jab song, but not checking on the serious jab jab jam balasi music. And then the, by chatting and going, then MC say, well, look, if you want to do a jab jab song, you must have a conch shell. And that's where the conch shell attitude came in. And that's where the whole jab jab idea of jam balasi will develop. Jam balasi originated from an idea MC came up with. And the idea was that we used to do political commentary. And he came on in the bathroom and said, you know, I have an idea. This political situation, remember we had an election in 1990. And in 1991, MC's view was, look, nothing has changed. So the whole idea started with the concept of the same damn thing. He said, look, man, the politician is the same damn thing. And he said, you know something? Let's do it. There's a job for it. So let's use the job concept a jab jab concept and do a song about the same damn thing. So that is where the concept started that we should do a song from a jab, with the jab, with the jab as the bass. Mm -hmm. He didn't come and say, let's use a jab jab rhythm. But because our whole approach was that we were, as Ricky was saying, ensure the rhythm reflected what the song was doing. If you're doing a song with jab as a bass, then it meant that you should really move into the jab jab rhythm. Right, so it, that, 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 that is the logic of what we got to the Jab Jab Rhythm. When the, we wrote this song in the studio, we started to write the song, and there was a, a split in the band. You had two persons who were very vocal, and then going back to Jab Jab, and this putting down the band with the grade in the band, and thing, thing. And Don and Leon got kind of confused. Should we go? Should we not go? You know, because the men are vocal. They, I mean, they come out and and they were seemingly men who were supposed to have head, right? The, who was in the in high positions before and who was, you know, even teacher and thing. And they think, no, 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 jab, jab. You bring down the band to jab, jab, and you know this kind of thing. And I thought about it, you know. But then Troy Gavi came in a little time afterwards, and we were talking about the same idea. And Troy, Troy, Troy said, man, MC, man, you know, singing a song, sing about the situation, because that's that, that your thing. Sing about, um, you don't have no good commentary. And Don, wink an eye for me. <laughs> Don, make a little sweet eye. And I tell Don, you know, thumbs up. Go. I was quite privileged and fortunate to always hear Moss music long before. We will sit and discuss the ideas and uh, the intentions and sometimes be a part of the mixing process. But again, it came back to Don, his feelings, and uh, Ricky and Leon and other guys coming together to merge. It was a, a complete team effort always. I think was Don was also a key supporter of MC's research effort. And I mean, I always remember conversations with them, how is it going, who you talk to, who you should talk to. You know, we got to really understand this thing. We got to get to the fellas who really know about this thing. So there was, there was this ongoing discussion between, I mean, Don was a key driver or supporter of MC in the whole research part of, of, of trying to capture the, the whole jab jab culture and, and, and rhythm. I asked Garnet, I said, Garnet boy, you know no old, some old jab jab song nothing, no? So while they're fighting to figure out what and what and what and what, uh, putting lines in place, you know? But the only thing we came up with, or I came, because I didn't like what Garnet came up with, was him, um, don't pass in me yard, uh, if you realize that's the, Jab jab thing, but the rest is not so much the jab jab thing except the spelling. So I put things in place and I started to write the song. I got some spelling, they lead me to some old people who used to play jab jab before. Um, Willby, he was a butcher man from St. James, and I don't feel like called Bob Rasta Bob. Rasta Bob died. 
and things. But I went and got some spelling from Will Be. And what was nice about it, Will Be gave me the spelling in Patois. So I thought I had it set. So I write down the, I take the part what I get, and I put it in the little song for the spelling, not knowing it's bad word, <laughs> indecency, bad, bad, bad word. <laughs> the song was a very conscious and deliberate attempt to promote Jab Jab as a culture, as a, as a staple of Grenadian culture. And I'm thinking with credit to MC, I had, I mean, yes, the final idea came when we had the emergency. But if I remember well, MC had been re researching this thing for well over a year. Right, MC talked about that a year before we came to, and, and the, the, the piece that he had to do a lot of research on was the Jab Jab spelling, which unfortunately the, mo the modern current um, Jab songs have seemed to have lost total touch with. But if you notice, an important part of Jam Balassi rule was what was called the Jab spelling, which is like a, a real big part of the culture. And MC, did credit to him, did a lot of research ahead of, ahead of the season talking to fellas, some old traditional job. I remember there's a particular guy from St. James. I always remember him when he was a postman. <laughs> He's a guy that played job every year. He was one guy that MC went to to try and help him to understand how you go about coming up with this job job spelling thing, you know? And I mean, if you listen to job, that's you, there's quite a bit of the job, what is called job job spelling. Wake up, wake up, my turn to spell punk. Kim, yeah, Kim. Yeah, Kim skin. A pong, a, a pong. Pong, not skin myself. Alright. I pong, I pong, I pong, I pong, I pong, I pong. Make a kiss, make a kiss, make a kiss, make a kiss. Make a skin, and this skin. That's not the pong kiss. That's not the pong kiss. I will spell pong for myself for you. That was a very, very good one. I was looking for a while ago. I see you, mother. I see you, mother. All right, well, if I write a, a voice in a song, the song don't complete, you know? So the thing is, that is why this thing get down to roots. Remember we tradition, because that is our thing. Now, we there is, with all due respect to Grenadian people, we is Labi, eh? But say what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, remember? We, so the, the thing coming around now in a job that, you know, in the Jab Jab, remember, you know, for this Kambule, Jam Balasi. So for this time, now it's Jab Jab that ruling. In this time, you know, and what it is. So that's the song start. Yes, we everywhere, taking it from the grapevine. Yeah, yeah. we're making all with Kong, Pikong, and so if the campaign didn't pass with me, and there's the part of the Jab Jab thing, you know. So the campaign didn't pass in me yard, they wouldn't have seen how me more, but Moto K do pass in me yard, and then I will speak out. I have one line from Hamlet, Hamlet Mark. I remember I um, walked in one night and they were walking on this thing and you know this Don was experimenting with this with this um, beat and then Leon and MC and so on they experimented the lyrics and so on and the, the thing just developed in a very generic way in the studio and and everybody added their ideas on the piece you know you, you know even in me added my own ideas on the piece you know when you talk about um, the breath the breath it you know how you can I insert the dancing why that song good let's put that in. So that's how the, 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 the thing came about. Key to the success of Jambalasi is the rhythm, which came from transferring the intricate patterns played on the goatskin drums to the acoustic drums. That Jambalasi rhythm started, I remember Leon coming at me, Leon coming at me for, um, for a, a cassette that I had, that I got from Fitzroy Bido, the then commissioner of police. Uh, or it, it was probably before he became commissioner, and he had given me this this zook tape, and they came and I and I, I I gave them the the tape to listen to to get an idea of the sort of vibes in the zook music, and it evidently they they molded that jamba asi song, I guess along with you know from that tape. Ricky was looking for a, a, a drum beat. I said, no, we want jab, jab, drum beat. But remember, we had a while and have a drumming for itself. Jab, jab had a drumming for itself. But the, the, the one was more rolling, this kind of thing. But jab, jab had an introduction. <laughs> you know, that was the jab, jab thing. So <laughs> I said, no, we had to get this thing. And they, so Ricky walked out the pattern. Because he was the drummer. I could only give him the idea. So, credit to Ricky, 
yeah. to put the idea, you know, you bring it out, you know. Um, but I thought, which with me, that that part would have been on the Congress. So I thought that the Congress and the drum would have make up the thing. But Ricky had better ideas. The, the challenge was how, how do we, I mean, the, the, the Jab Jab rhythm is basically played off the goat skin drum, right? And, and the challenge was how do you capture that on a standard acoustic drum set with a snare and a bass drum and a hi-hat and, and how do you still get the same rhythmic influences and, and keep that true to the culture. Um, so I understood the, the rhythm, I knew the structure of the rhythm, I, I knew the, 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 the drums that made up the rhythm and basically the Jab Jab rhythm is it's three drums, right? You have one drum, the bass drum, just going, right? And then you have a second drum, just playing that. And then the third drum, right? So the combination of those three, that's the jab jab rhythm. Three drummers is what it takes in the typical goat skin, goat skin environment to play the jab jab rhythm. So how did I, as one drummer, <laughs> play those three drums and capture the rhythm? And that was the challenge. So I always remember, so I programmed it on, on, on the drum, the drum machine, and I captured all the three drums. But when I did that, there was really no room for music. The whole rhythm was filled. So Don was like, this, no, 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 they, 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 this thing too jumbled up. We, we have to create some gaps for the guitar. We have to create room for the keyboard to play and the bass to play. And it therefore took me to, to be able to figure out, to come to a different understanding of the rhythm, to decide what I could leave off of the drums to keep the pattern and, and allow room for the bass. So the bass then started to capture I mean, the, 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 the standard drum was the, the bass and the, and the foot drum with the, but the, this piece was important. But then I had, to, I had to leave room in that third piece so that the keyboard could play some of that, so that the guitar could play some of that. And it took us a couple of nights well enough to fill it out. Look, I remember we got to a point that it was like, no, nah, this thing's sung into jumbled up. This thing's sung into noisy. We, we were well along the road. There was instrumentation, there was melody, there was bass. But the whole rhythm was sung so confused because I was, I was still trying to play everything that the drum would play. And one night after rehearsal, we decided, let's give this thing another try. And we got it. Two new innovations, the conch shell and the music video. Andy told me, because as I said, Moss was a family. So Andy told me, I said, I want, uh, I want a shell. So Don told me, and any time you have an idea, Don, for it, eh? Don said, go for the shell. So I went on my cock, and cock lent me the shell. So we came up, I came up with the shell, and I blew, you know? And according to Don, boy, he's the first man I put in conch shell in, in music, you know? Don tell, but we laugh at the idea. You understand? Not knowing what happened to Jambalasi. There's a, a live shell that was there. Okay. And that shell tore with us, that shell going to the States, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only shell I got to the visa. <laughs> the conch shell was a pulling part of the um, Jambalasi. Beside the jab jab music, the conch shell. Because the next year, WCK used conch shell in their tune. Yeah. We had the spelling, we had the rhythm, the drums, and we had the shell. It was, the whole, Jam Alassi Rule was a deliberate jam, jab, jab product. So we brought in all the elements of jab, jab into it. We started off with the same damn thing, because that is what the jabs used to be saying. That's where it came from, same damn thing. And then we added the shell, we had the spelling, we had the rhythm. It was a delivery product, so, that, so that's why it's there. This is one of the fastest songs Mass International ever produced. Because within about four days, we had Jambala Sewell recorded. I myself was given my task to um, do the video. I don't know if you all ever see the video. You have posy on my head, two rings on my nose. Rub them with charcoal, and I have to go to work the morning, eh? About three o'clock, Hamlet, Mark and them have me. Running up and down the, the road, <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing this video. Late one um, morning, because we were finishing practicing, and um, they all dressed up in, dabbed themselves with the black MC and garnet, and, so, and right uh, in the road going down to the studio, that's where they filmed this thing. I feel it all. I never take time in my life. But that we took coals dust, I pick up some coals dust, and we coals dust myself, take a book, and some jab jab before, we used to have this polished pan glasses, and we used to have this long pan fingernail, when they clang, 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 clang. 
and the mouth of children so that way children so afraid jab 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 no is sweet jab jab is sweet mass now jab jab and this have this big cough mass up and a chain so when you hear jab jab and the and the children hear the shell they know it so everybody taking cover on the bed because when they think so and they spell for you white teeth with the red thing in the mouth and black thing nobody is staying wrong we could not get the polish thing. we only put the I think it was rose pink my mother had. So I put some rose pink, and then I put some rose pink, a little shot. And early morning done, we did the video. In fact, the song was finished mixing at midnight, and the video was done um, at the open, say, 4 in the morning. I would, as the sun was rising, people were going to church about 6 in the morning. The video was shot right outside the studio. And then we were on the airport for what time? <laughs> Literally, from shooting the video. We go straight yeah. to the airport. We left the video with Hamlet Mark to finish it. We never saw the final version of the video until we came back. It was actually the first official music video that was done in Grenada. Um, I mean, before that, people, you know, record people's miming and that kind of thing, but I produced music video. That was the first time it was done. The hit tune that almost wasn't. For the lack of a few Canadian cents, the history of Grenada's music could have been very, very different. We never rehearsed the song as a man. The song was recorded, sent off, and then we left for Canada. But the whole band never played the song together before we left. When we got to Canada, we actually canceled the record. Because I remember we left around 20 something. And therefore, there were two weekends one weekend, and then the second weekend was Rainbow Weekend. So we wanted the record out the weekend before Rainbow Weekend. So the jury should have gone up to Canada if it's a Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, took Barbados and came back the Friday. When we called the Grenada and the the Friday to see if the record was being sent home, they said no, they cannot do it because they was tied up with crop over music and they could not produce our record until the following week, which would have meant that it would have gotten to Grenada Rainbow Weekend. And we felt that Rainbow Weekend was too late to release any song for Carnival. Because when you go into Rainbow, it's the popular songs that play. And, and whatever doesn't, whatever survives Rainbow is all goes into Carnival. But you can't release a new song, Rainbow Weekend. So we then decided, look, it didn't make any sense releasing the song, spending the money to press the record and so on. So we said, you're going to cancel Chamberlain But we were living at Humber College. Yeah, Humber College campus. Campus. And those days, they didn't have cell phone and those kind of stuff. So all they had was pay phones. And we could only call back Barbados using coins. But we had just gotten to Canada, so we didn't have many coins. <laughs> so I think we had coins about five, two or three minutes stuck. Yes. So we called the guy in Barbados and said, look, we called him to cancel the record. He responded, I said, no, you can't cancel the record. You've already spent so much money in producing the record and so on. It doesn't make sense. You should finish. We said, no, it's too late. We can't release the record. And then, bling. Money finished. <laughs> so we thought he had gotten the message to cancel the record. But we never wanted to call back and then we had to perform, we left yeah. and go, we had no record for carnival yeah, and coins. that's it. That's what you didn't know the coins. We had coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had cash, but we had the coins to put in the pay phone. <laughs> Next thing we heard from Grenada the Friday night, that the records came in. <laughs> the Friday before before Rainbow, that the records came in. What to do? So we said, okay, let it go. And the Friday night, or the Saturday, they told us that the record's coming on. So good old Mary, faithful to the band, you know, went and collected the thing on the airport. And she gave strategic DJs, look, what I want, what I want, you know? That was the Friday. Saturday night, somebody called me in Canada. Called me. I think it was DJ Arthur to say, boy, I want a copy of that. So I said, a copy of what? Because I don't remember the thing. A copy of what? He say, um, um, run fast, your mother come in. So, <laughs> so I think, why is run fast, your mother come in? Because this thing out of me, me you know? And I remember, I say, boy, I look at that. He say, yes. He say, boy, he tell me, say, I have to put on a, a, a how do you call it in Trinidad Soka, a version for the people to sing that in Guav. Because, you know, I was a DJ. I think I see her. So then my mind start running back now. To, I have to try to remember the song. By Saturday midday, the phones were ringing from Grenada saying, look, this thing I played five times on the radio for the morning already. <laughs> People are going for it. By Saturday night, we heard that's all that's playing in, in, in Rainbow City. So we were on tour, we were up in Montreal. And then the news came, hey man, Jambalasi rule, 
mashing up Rainbow City. So you say, what, that time the band don't know how to play drum, but that's real full yet, you know. So when I came down, I dropped, the bus dropped me here, and I just put my bags inside, and I said, let me go do it and see what they do. That was after 11 the night. And from, I dropped by the cinema. And from the cinema, I went right around the tongue. All I had to tick, 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 tick. Everybody in the rain, tick, tick, tick. And I decided I'm in trouble. I was, then I realized I'm in trouble. And that was Jambalasi. At that point in time, Kalalu was dominating. Jambalasi rule just came and he swept the whole crowd. Now we used to come back to perform in Rainbow City. We used to do Canada the Saturday on the road. Sometimes we do the island the Sunday. But that year we came back the Sunday because we had to perform in Rainbow the Monday night. So all of a sudden we had a hit on our hands the Monday night to perform, which the band had never rehearsed. Remember, so we didn't have the time to rehearse it. So when we landed on the airport the Monday night coming from Canada, Everybody telling us, whoa, your song is so big, we like the song, that, 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 that. we're coming to hear tomorrow night. Oh, we don't know the song. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never played the song like You never played the song on the drum machine. The programming was on the drum machine. On the drum machine, so we never played the song. <laughs> and we were going to perform in Rainbow City that Monday night. Everybody coming to hear Jack Balassi rule and the band doesn't know the song. <laughs> so what we did is we were doing the song, Jack. We ran the basic bands, make sure everybody understood the basic bands. <laughs> and I think we did a voice on the chorus tonight. Yeah. We did a voice on the chorus and we just get on to run fast, your mother come in. Oh, Which is what everybody was, was queuing it on. And then we learned this song during the week to play on the road Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, but we literally, we canceled the record and we come in to meet a hit which we didn't know and had to perform. I went to St. George's and, well, the band was going ahead, going along the street and uh, Everybody was just um, leaving the other bands and coming to Moss International. And um, because that year, um, Callaloo was the, what she say, like the biggest song. But when Moss got into St. George's and the blast, Jab Malassi, people went crazy, you know? They just forgot about Jab Ma um, about Callaloo and everybody was singing Jab Malassi, you know? Run fast, your mother come in, <laughs> you know? I think Grenada finally embraced a music experiment. But I think what sold the song was, well, of course, the beat, but also the lyrics, if I want to say that myself. I think it was well done. And even sometimes I, I listen to the song now, and I realize how well done the song you know, was. And Jambalasi broke all the established norms, because what you find happening, it was when you listen to the lyrics and you understand what is being said was a reflection of its time and the issues being spoken about back then politically and socially. And it was able to cross over to be a top party song, to be a song that took the road. So it served two sides of the coin. So it was not just a party song, a jump up song. You need to listen also to the lyrics and understand the context in which it came together. And it was different hook lines, different things in the song that gave a particular message. So it really was something different, unique from what we were accustomed to. And again, it came from that of Moss International and the Calypso Castle and the studios downstairs, downstairs Mr. Charles's house. The impact that they have had, I mean, we can't measure it, but it's, it's significant. I mean, it's, it's created a genre in some ways. Imagine if they never had the idea to take that goat skin drum rhythm and put it in the studio. We never know what it was today. Right? It'd still be something that we only listen to maybe in the, you know, the carnival morning or whatever when the, 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 that kind of drum stuff was being played. But the reality is 
that they have created in something that's actually crossed over the bridge, available commercially, and it's now a genre, right? As a youth now, we knew of the drums, live drums on the roadway. We practicing basically for Juve morning, so we have some guys beating the drums and we making up songs on people in the community and you know the conch shell and that that was music. Now the first time I ever heard it recorded is when I heard that mass international rhythm. I'm like, what? Genius, because we do it every day, we hear it every day, every carnival we play it, but no one ever took the initiative to, to record. No, that's where I think it started from. I never heard any tune or music before with that full jab jab beat. So hearing that, I think it was like, to me especially, it was like, whoa. Because um, I'm, I'm somebody who really in love with the old mass, the traditional mass from the Veco, the Wild Indian, the Shotney, the Jab Jab, that's me. And when I heard that, it was, wow. And I mean, I'm a youth, I was a, 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 probably a teenager at the time, but I know I fell in love with it. People will behave in a certain particular way, and you never know something could have drive you to behave. You understand, express yourself on a next level. And that's why I see Jambalas. It's like everything is to be night music, okay, yeah, yeah. And then you get some men coming and tell you, um, you vex it or vex him damn thing. That's like, yeah. You know what I mean? So I put it like the, the rebel, the rebel of music. That's where the, the whole madness started. And to me, I would say I'm Jambalasi. So Jambalasi is just taking with culture, Glabe culture and taking the social issues at the time, political issues, well, not social, the political issues at the time, and fusing them together. And what may have happened is that people could identify with these things. The center of the Moss International Universe was Don Charles, a gentle genius who was the personification of humility, but whose skills and talent has transformed Grenada's musical landscape. Don has always been a very quiet, behind the scenes person. Don will get, if you check, when Moss sets up on the stage, Don always try to stay the furthest distance behind the keyboards, deliberately stacking the keyboards so high that you wouldn't see him. Don has always been that quiet kind of person who likes to be in the background, not necessary to the full being, and probably that's just his, his personality, but I think his contribution should be recognized. I think he opened the doors, he created the avenues. The studio might not have been the best as compared to what was available at the time in Barbados and in Trinidad, but he provided an opportunity. He provided a skill level. He got persons involved. He created an avenue for a number of persons. Part of it in a sense maybe his fault because he never really hung the spotlight. Don is not a guy who wants to come out in the spotlight and, and beat his own chest up. I mean, even if we go, to, when we go to on tours or for shows, he will just not go, not really want to go to the interview. He'll be the guy in the background, you know? So he'll send myself or Leon or somebody like that or, or the little singers and so on. So, he, so he's, so unless you're, you're, you're following this thing very closely, you may, you may not even realize who's the real force behind it. So he, because he was that kind of character. Okay. Um, and I think Don's, Don's greatness is not, is not just the music. I must deal with the music, but the people he, he helped in the music. Um, you had to have been around Don to realize Don, if Don got paid for all the stuff he did for a lot of folks, he'd have been a millionaire. Don helped, just helped a lot of guys. A lot of guys would just walk in the studio and Don would just walk with them. I learned a lot from him. We used to do all the things together, you know? Um, and I remember he had this chuckle, this laugh. When he had something on you, he would chuckle and laugh. <laughs> Not maliciously, but to say, well, I have this one up on you. Very, very kind guy, very kind guy. And he was not afraid to share his musical knowledge um, with you. Um, and in those days, you know, you had every day a new synthesizers coming out, new keyboards, new um, software in the industry. So, and he was on top of all these things. And he would share that information with you. You know, he was, what I would say, 
I mean, besides being a good friend, I mean, Donna's, to put it, to put it simply, is a good guy. Don was like my big brother. Now, we developed and even the band for me. Now, we used to kick, they used to kick some me and see, boy, you and Don is um, Flintstones. <laughs> so Don was known as Fred, and I was known as uh, Barney. Unfortunately, Don Fred dropped, but Barney continued because everybody, Barney, Barney, Barney. And that's how close to myself and Don was. Don was willing to teach me every living thing possible. And I mean, he loved discipline. I grew up in a disciplined environment, so I was willing to learn. He had a lot of sacrifice. Times when maybe I should be partying, I mean, the studio is done. And when Don was in that studio, I tell you, we drink coffee at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Don was willing to share all his experience with you. And we developed that close relationship until I was Don's co-pilot when he driving. Because any time he driving and he falling asleep, and he'll go, say, Don, you sleeping? Huh? No, nah, man, no, nah, man. <laughs> he had a shortcut that he never told anybody from St. Andrews to St. George's. I've never seen somebody cover the hills so quickly. Don will call you and tell you I'll see you in five minutes. And bap, he's up and about. When he, when he did something and he felt that it sung so kind of different or sung good, he just looks at you. He, he, he's not a talker. He wouldn't talk much, you know, but he looks at you and, as, you know, okay, that sung good, <laughs> you know. Remember when Randy Isaac came, just came out? Don and Leon spoon fed and guided Randy to, to become a proper Calvsonian. And many other Calvsonians, they were willing to, Don was willing to just sacrifice. Sometimes I say, Don, I'm tired. He say, give the guys a chance, man. Come on, Barney, stay with me. You can't leave me and go. Stay. And I stay there with him and he'll walk. Why not open a carnival institute where we can sit down? and learn the truth teach the people about mass and costume making dancing and everything then we go have a better carnival eh? in the oval yes just for one and all and on the street there'll be plenty plenty more feet parading to the beat there are young people who taught to play guitar the keyboard and so on the only thing he never taught me to play those instruments because he wanted me to be with him in the song engineering business. But I will tell you, I mean, I know his links with, with, with a Jamu, with a Timpo, you could, you could go back. And I mean, even just before, there were plans for Mars to do something with Third World. And then one of the guys in Third World thing died and thing didn't really come. But there were plans ahead. And you know, Don was always willing to give his all. He, he wasn't watching money for him, wasn't. Once he could teach, even when he had problems for band he said, well, if he could get a few young guys to teach. We brought a few. All the studies about traveling and they can't sing one, can't sing one verse in a song, was it? But I could tell the contribution I done. Every day I call his name. That's my icon in music. <laughs> Myself was just a, a song engineer, not trained in any school or any so on. Trained by Don Charles. Don was like, you know, the keyboardist. You know, that's most international keyboardist, I mean, you know? So I used to look up to this guy and, you know, you try to aspire to be as good as them. Most International was an amazing band. Don Charles was an amazing keyboard player, right? When I was, I don't know, old and reading about the Prophet 6 and, and keyboards that I only read about in, mag in Keyboard Magazine, you know, this dude was playing these synths, right? So, in some ways, a legend to me, right? Moss International has left a lasting legacy. A legacy that is now in the hands of a new generation of producers and artists. Jab music is now a recognized soca subgenre, a definitive Grenadian brand as the legacy continues. Most of the guys who sing it right now just have a rhythm and a chant and they're not developing the music. At the end of the day, he make the point, the music, the whole thing was to develop a musical form, 
and therefore the music is important, the instrumentation, the orchestration, the melodic lines. We have to bring this into it, and unless we bring this into it, it remains a, it will remain a sub genre. One of the advice I would like to to give to the young guys is that they must they must okay they 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 they're very good at the computers, and I think they must add to that some musical skill. I mean, it is very important to have an idea of, you know, how to, how to, how to construct music. A lot of those guys put a rhythm together. Those guys can't play an instrument. So you go and get a, a you know, a beat on a computer and you have a rhythm going. Because I, I, one of the things, of course, in those days, it was a, almost like a live process. A guy came with a guitar and a thing and, and you know, work with a few cards and try to get a feel of how this thing will work with that so on. I don't think we have that process going to it. So it's, it's, it's part of because of the technology in a sense, right? I mean, you amaze a lot of the producers now are not, are not musicians. A lot of guys who make rhythm can't be an instrument, you know. If you're going to be a studio producer and produce music for somebody and charge for it, you got to learn to play an instrument. Or at least you got to have somebody that comes in that knows how to competently play a guitar, I mean, you're going to have to learn to play a keyboard because most of this stuff goes on through a keyboard. You're going to have somebody who's competent at doing it. Like playing one finger at a time and doing a harmony a second finger just isn't useful. So that's the number one thing I would say. If you learn to play, play smooth. You don't have to be the baddest jazz player on the planet. You just got to learn to hold a few chords and be smooth about it and practiced about it. There was a version I, I heard about two or three years ago. I don't hmm. remember all the, all the different artists' names, eh? but um, Black and Dirty. Mm -hmm. Is a song. Oh, it's a yeah, slow yeah. jab jab. And I, I, Sandman. Sandman? No prisoners. Right. No prisoners. So that is a to me is an important development in the genre. I think it's for the, the music to go mainstream as a genre, it must be able to function at the different tempos and with different themes. It must be able to have a love a, 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 a lover's and I love song in Jab Jab, so to speak, mm -hmm. against the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And the, the rhythm at that speed for me was a very interesting innovation. It's yeah. one of the better modern innovations yeah, I've heard I, of. I really like it, yeah. And I think it's an important step. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. The next video clip, while referring specifically to a 1997 Moss International composition entitled Rampage, is an apt analysis of the relentless and deliberate attempts by the band to create a unique Grenadian sound. Here is the gentle genius himself, Don Charles. Yeah, well, Rampage is the usual, our usual attempt at a fusion. You know, like we said before, we, 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 um, we took the authentic thing off the street and we tried to put the conventional type of music, type of instrumentation, you know, little horns, little bass, little, you know. It works. <laughs> How long did you all take to do this one? Well, we've been playing with the idea for a little while. Huh? This is something we actually experimented with on the road last year, Juve morning, you know, and um, we figured the vibe was there and, you know, we decided to hold on to it. And the lyrics kind of thing I can't tell you much about because I, I know lyrics, man, you know, but, um, you know, them guys play with the lyrics based on things are happening today, you know what I mean? So that kind of changed up a little, but, but, but basically the vibe, you know, same kind of thing. After several months of writing, recording, and editing, we have finally concluded Jambalasi, the story. Over the past few months, we have been able to chronicle a very important part of Grenada's cultural and musical history. In fact, the attention Grenada is now getting for Jab Jab and Jab Music internationally can be directly credited to the exploits of Moss International and the genius of Don Charles, singing MC, Leon and Ricky Charles, and the others. This documentary is dedicated to the memory of Don Charles and Garnet Williams, who together were affectionately known as Fred and Barney. May their souls rest in peace. Let's get down to roots. Remember we tradition. For this Kambule, Jambalasi ruling this time. Yes, we everywhere, taking it from the grapevine. 
we breaking all rules with fun, pickong and rhyme. If the campaign didn't pass in me yet, they wouldn't have say how me more bad mo to k do pass in me yet. You say you'll make it better. Eh eh, you make we stain we finger. Now only one year later, this country getting heart failure. Eh, you vote you don't vote same damn thing. The heart or the hand same damn thing. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> How can we grow without our basic needs? If you change your course, here could be paradise. Why strangle the hopes by trying to build on lies?